of the founding fathers? No, the one. No, I I appreciate you. I appreciate you wanting to clarify. And and any time that I say something, misunderstand what you're saying, feel free to go back and uh, let's clarify because my purpose is to really understand what okay. the situation is. So, so. The question was, do you have a principle that permits you to determine when we should go to war and when we should not? And um, I was going to ask you, what, f what conditions are necessary and sufficient to go to war? Uh -huh. So feel free to make your list and tell me, because a principle can include various, various conditions. It doesn't have to be just one condition. Okay. Okay. That's, that's it doesn't have to be one condition. Okay. It can be... If this is the case, and this is the case, and this is the case, we should go to war. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have a, such a principle that permits you to determine when to go to war and when not to? Yeah, um, I think that you know some of the criteria, and you know I can't say that for every situation, every piece of criteria would need to be met. Um, but obviously, if you know if your national security interests are threatened, I think that's probably the biggest one. Um, you know, if there's an attack on U.S. soil, um, you know, obviously, you know, we see stuff like that in World War II. Um, right. Pearl Harbor, uh, even you could say 9-11 uh, that was used as justification in part for uh, the war on terror in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, so obviously I think that's that's probably one of the biggest indicators of Well, going the war. Iraq did not attack the United States in 9-11, right? Correct. So that uh, that was a preemptive war. They were attacking us even though they, we had not attacked them in yeah. Iraq, right? Uh, so, yeah. uh, so I, I think you know you're going somewhere here. If we're attacked, we should use military force. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or if there's an imminent threat yeah. of attack, I mean they're about to attack us. We have evidence that they're yeah. going to attack us, and uh, then you know we don't have to wait exactly until they attack us. Like if we knew about Pearl Harbor a day before, we could have gone, you know, get the ships out and gone for it, you know, because mm -hmm. we knew they were going to attack us, but we didn't know so. Right, so, but uh, Iraq wasn't either of those cases. Uh, neither had they attacked us or was there an imminent threat of attack. They, they in fact, did not have the capacity to attack America. So that, that was a preemptive war in the sense of, we want to attack you just in case sometime in the future you might attack us. Um, I think that, I mean, obviously Al-Qaeda was, you know, our primary target for the war on terror, and I think that, um, they were in Afghanistan. Correct, correct. And so, that, uh, in fact, uh, Saddam had been killing those uh, Al Qaeda terrorists and had them totally under control until we uh, knocked off Saddam. Correct. Um, I think that, I, you know, I think that a lot of the tension, um, you know, was still remaining from the Gulf War. Um, but I also think that, that, you know, there was uncertainty in the Middle East um, and, you know, us. Moving troops to the Middle East. Um, okay. Well, when we and, when we yeah. intervened, when we went to war in the first uh, Gulf War, uh, was Kuwait an ally of ours? I, I don't believe they were. No. And had uh, Iraq attacked us? They had not. And there was uh, was it an imminent threat of attack by Iraq? No. We went there for a total different reason, not because we were attacked or the imminent threat. So, is there are there other conditions that you think are sufficient? Say, for example, what we were discussing before, if, if a country has harbored terrorists that have attacked us, is that sufficient reason to go to war? You know, I, I think that, I, I really think it is like a case-by-case -case basis. Um, well, if it's a case-by-case -case basis, it's not, it's not based on principle. In other words, there is no principle. That's just whatever, in this case I want to do it, in that case I don't want to. You have to, you've, you've pointed to a good rationale for going to war, which is, self-defense mm -hmm. if we're attacked or even in threat of attack my question is is there anything else well, that is a good that you think is a proper rationale besides that to go to war well in the, in the case of the gulf war with kuwait obviously you know we weren't an ally of kuwait but it, it was in defense of another country's interests um, okay so then you when think they, when they could not properly defend those interests themselves so you think that uh, you know that it's our job to defend other countries interests as well it doesn't matter if we've been attacked or not, or imminent threat of attack. I can't say that it's our job, but I think that um, you know that's kind of one of the things that the United States stands for, and I, I stand behind that that ideal. So you think that uh, you shouldn't respect the national sovereignty of other countries, and 
you should uh, attack them regardless of whether they've attacked you or were an imminent threat of attack? I think that um, I, I think that if you see the need for assistance um, and you have the cooperation of you know other countries um, or the UN, then I, I think it's I think it's proper to assist in that situation. Um, if you see that, especially if it's if it has to do with the stability of a region. Okay, so that's what we call the world policeman. We we're we're supposed to keep everybody in line. And previously you said that you didn't really think that you we should be the world policeman, but that's exactly what the world policeman does. He decides whether, in this case, a country has acted improperly and is uh, abusing their own people or another country, and we attack them, like we did with Saddam in the first Gulf War. That's what the world policeman is. So you correct? Yeah, I, I think I, I think I just said I wouldn't call it the world police, but I know that's the that's the generalization. Um, right. Okay. So uh, if other countries did the same, would we be safer if they also decide to be world policemen? Um, you know, I I truly think that comes down to what what countries we're we're talking about, well, but and and what and the way that they're intervening. You know, obviously annexing Ukraine is probably well, uh, he they think that they're that they they were being the world policemen right there and uh, because they those people that they uh occupied and took over uh a lot of them were pro russia and uh, uh had sympathies with russia and they were hoping that russia would help them and so they went ahead and did it and uh they were involved in syria also so now we have russia being the world policeman as well how is that working out I don't think it's working out very well. Um, no, because if, I, uh, if countries follow other countries, if you if you say it's okay to intervene without being attacked, then the other countries say the same thing. They say, okay, I'm good with this. I'm a big country. I'll decide when I think it's right to intervene and which people I want to protect and which ones I don't. And national sovereignty, hell with that. And national sovereignty is what was keeping world peace, because then. Other countries don't involve, don't get involved in, in interior problems of a particular country. They can talk and say they can boycott, they can do that, but they don't send their air force to bomb them. That's the problem with uh, getting rid of the principle of national respecting national sovereignty. It's a free for all in the world, and that's that's what uh, we have led the world to believe because we have been the world. We're intervening whenever we think it's proper.